A Russian research vessel has been trapped in Antarctic ice since Christmas Eve. Several efforts to free the ship have failed, but a new mission by the U.S. Coast Guard icebreaker named the Polar Star is underway to rescue the crew members of the Russian vessel, as well as a Chinese ship that came to its rescue. Well, last Friday, a helicopter from the Chinese vessel rescued 52 of the passengers from the Russian ship before it also became trapped in the ice. Well, the other side of ice in the documentary film with the same title chronicles Sprague Theobald's firsthand experience being stuck on a ship in Arctic ice. And after nearly a week of being stuck in that thick ice in uh, Antarctica, those 74 people on the Russian research vessel may finally be rescued, we understand as an update. Russian officials said Monday that a heli helicopter rescue operation will begin once weather permits. Strong Arctic winds and poor visibility turned away three previous rescue attempts by icebreaker vessels. Should have said that on the top. But Sprague, thank you so yeah, well, much for being you here for with us. Me on. I am fascinated by your experience here. Really it's, uh, ice is ice, I can tell you that. Where there's, uh, we were in the Arctic, these guys are down to the Antarctic, and ice is, it is an animal unto its own. Okay, so you sought to go on an expedition of what's called the Northwest Passage. Right, okay. right. Why? That's a really good question. <laughs> that's, that's the one I've been trying to answer for three, four years now. As a filmmaker and as a, an adventurer, I really wanted to go up into the Northwest Passage to see if I could find it, this theoretical passage between the oceans, and talk to the locals about their take on climate change. You know, the, the media at large has, has covered it, but hasn't gotten to ground zero. So I started to go up. I went on a 57 trawler, foot trawler with my family, and we went up and we went to Greenland and got into the passage, and then Mother Nature really started pushing us around. And the, the scope of the documentary changed very quickly. While I did speak to some locals about their, their concepts of climate change and what they were noticing, uh, what we had on our hands very quickly was ice. And before we talk about your experience of getting trapped, very similar to uh, yeah. these two vessels now on the South Pole, you're in the North Pole, right. uh, uh, tell me a little bit about the Northwest Passage. I mean, many have tried to find it and, and navigate it, and it literally has, uh, e I don't mean to be disrespectful, but it has eaten people up. It has, indeed. It, the Northwest Passage is, uh, I refer to it as the Arctic Grail. It is a theoretical shortcut between the Atlantic and the Pacific, and if since pre-Columbus days, man has been trying to find it, if they can do the shortcut, they can avoid going down around Cape Horn, mm -hmm. save 3,000 some odd miles. So as I said, Columbus days, hundreds and hundreds of ships have tried to find it, and almost equally as many men have died. Um, probably the, the most well-known is the Franklin Expedition of 1850. Now here are two 100-foot ships with 120 men, and to this date, nobody knows what happened to them. Mm. They just, the ships, vanished in the ice, the men vanished. The only thing they did find was just small pieces of bone that had saw marks. So they knew the final days weren't good. It was cannibalism, but mm -hmm. completely vanished. Yeah, well, thankfully, you lived to tell the tale. Yeah. So your vessel got uh, trapped by the ice, very similarly to this situation where exactly. the, 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 the uh, wind currents changed yep. the pattern of the ice, the ice boxed you in. Exactly. When you realized you were really stuck, what did you think? It's very seldom, if ever, in life we feel we're out of options. Because when you think about it, we can always call a, a cop, we can call a plumber, we can call a friend. We, we had no options left. I mean, zero options. The ice had us. And I had, my family had come aboard, my, my two stepchildren and my son, for this trip. Mm -hmm. So the first and only thing that was going through my mind for three days is if I brought my family together only to lead them to their death. Mm. It was, we got trapped a mile and a half from shore, and as the currents were pushing us, we got within a quarter of a mile of just granite rocks with tremendous sheets of ice being pushed upon them and shattering in front of us, which our boat was next in line. Right, right. Yeah. So there's a very good chance that it could have... Very easily. Yeah, yeah. Just, just crushed you as well. Tell me about some of the things that you tried to get yourself out. Uh, or is there any trying? There's nothing you can do. There's nothing to Absolutely, do. Absolutely, because you, you, it, it comes in from all angles. It's like a cat and mouse game, and it's like playing chess with an invisible opponent. Mm -hmm. It comes in from all angles, and it has you pinned. You can put it in forward as hard as you want. You can put it in reverse. Nothing will, will happen. Nothing will change. Um, so as we saw we were getting pushed onto shore, I said, you know, we have a choice. It's either to go down on the rocks, which as owner and, and leader, I just, I can't accept, or we can try and get the boat turned and use the boat, God forbid, as a battering ram to fight our way out of here, which is what we did. 
we got about five miles and got stuck again, and then that's where uh, a miracle really came in. Yeah, it really was an act of God, wasn't it? It was an act of God. Uh, we got stuck again for the second day. Absolutely no hope on getting out of it. And we were all mentally, physically, emotionally totally spent and exhausted. And I said, I've got to lie down. This is it. I can't take it anymore. We all lay down. The next thing I knew, my stepson was waking me up saying, you've got to look at this. And on the radar, we had moved. We were still in the ice, trapped. But we had moved seven miles down the coast by a hidden current or eddy that had taken us away from the rocks at this point. We were mm -hmm. still in trouble, mm -hmm. but not seeing the rocks ahead that we were going to just impale ourselves now, upon. And how long were you stuck, though, in that spot before? Um, before we actually got out, it was about three days told. Wow. And we got out onto the ice. We got tremendous footage of the boat you know, from the ice. We went under the ice. We dove. We marvelous footage from underneath that's in the documentary. I stopped diving after I saw how, how amazing a polar bear could swim underwater. You just brought yeah. up what I wanted to ask <laughs> you about. Of course, on the South Pole, they have uh, penguins down yes. there, not yes. that uh, dangerous to human beings. Right. You had to deal with polar bears. We had to deal with what polar bears. What precautions did you take, and how real, real was that threat? The threat was very real. We saw perhaps 28 in our, our five months up there. And uh, one, one, one example, it was it amazing. We were in an area that was totally flat for hundreds of yards. Two guys, two of the crew, always have guns mm. watching for the polar bear. They're not to take pictures, not to sightsee. Not that we would shoot the polar bear, but the noise would scare them away. So we, we shot, we did our filming, we got back into the dinghy, we we're maybe 30 seconds into the dinghy, and where the tripod had been, a polar bear was now sniffing. Wow. With two sets of eyes on flat terrain, he had managed to hide down into a, a gully or behind a rock the entire time and was watching us. And it's important for people to understand that polar bears, while they look really cute. Oh, very cute. They very are cold-blooded killers. Are, they, the, people like to say sharks no are, the, 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 right, <laughs> are the ultimate predator. It's the polar bear. They will kill just to kill, not because they're hungry or de feeling defensive. Let me just ask you this, and I know that you were able to go down into the ship, but how cold was that cold? What was that like? The water when we were shooting uh, underneath the water was 28 degrees, and the air was anywhere from 25 to 40. And with, with the wind chill, mm -hmm. it was uh it was amazing. Coldest you've ever been? Coldest I've ever been. Are yeah. you glad you had the experience? Oh, absolutely. Or just glad you lived to tell the I, tale? I'm glad to live to tell the tale, yeah. <laughs> All right, Sprague Theobald, thank you so much. Thank what you. a fascinating story. Congratulations on your book and your documentary. Thank you. That's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for joining us here at Arise America. We'll be right back here tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. I'm Debbie Turner Bell. Bye bye.